Hello, thank you for watching my channel today. My name's Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. Today I am doing my September book haul, which was a total of three books until today, when I met my lovely friend Nicola for lunch in a place called Harleston, which is just sort of the Norfolk Suffolk border, and she discovered a second-hand bookshop just around the corner when we had lunch, which was incredible. They had pretty much... Um, really recent releases some of them and also um they were excellent condition one pound for paperbacks one pound fifty for hardbacks absolute bargain so as you can imagine i left with a very full bag so first of all i just wanted to talk about um the books that i had before today one of which is a family heirloom which my dad has let me have um so this has got a little subscription inside from I don't know when from I guess the 1950s or 60s oh Christmas 1958 oh that's so nice so um this has been in my family all that time and this is a book called um the boy John by Sydney Grapes so um basically the boy John is a caricature who um was made up by Sydney Grapes who is a Norfolk man who um has written this character the boy John who is like a, a Norfolk um, sort of spoof I guess um, and this is his letters that he wrote to the Eastern Daily Press um, which are really funny um, throughout um, 1946 to 1958 so I read the introduction about Sydney Grapes and thought it sounded really funny and um, the, the letters are all written in dialect as well so the fact that I've been in Norfolk now for 17 years um, I'm sure I'll find this funny and touching then the second one is a book that my one of my patients has lent me um, and she, so she thought I would enjoy um, and that is um, called, you can't really see it very well, hold on, Constellations by Sinead Gleeson, um, Reflections from Life and this is how um, she talks about all the changes that a body makes over a lifetime and she does it in sort of, I think they're mini essays, um, so and it's also, she is Irish and it's about um, her being an Irish woman and different parts of her body and how they change throughout life through story. So I thought that sounded really interesting and um, I'm looking forward to that one. And then the third one is one that my colleague from work lent me. So this is a Patrick Gale book and both he and I are very big Patrick Gale fans and so whenever he gets a Patrick Gale book and reads it, he lends it to me. This one is really thick actually, probably the longest of his that I've read and it's called The Facts of Life. No idea what it's about so I shall read you the blurb. Hold on, there we go. Um, German composer Edward Pepper escapes to England just before the war begins in earnest. Struck with TB, he's recuperating in hospital when he meets Sally, a young doctor who has battled her way through medical school despite the opposition of her parents. They fall in love and marry, settling in the Fenlands of East Anglia. Years later, Edward watches as his grandchildren trip up against life and death and realises that patterns can repeat themselves, bringing both pain and unexpected discovery. So, multi-generational saga, it's typical Patrick Gale. Nice that it's the East Anglia singers, that's where I grew up and where I live. And um, I'm sure it'll be wonderful just because I've never read a Patrick Gale book that hasn't been wonderful. So, there are the three I had already. I shall delve into the carrier bag that I've got on the floor. Um, you may be able to hear quite a lot of background noise. The children are playing, bless them. Um, so I may have to duck in and out, we'll see how this goes. So, first of all, in mint condition, is um, a, an author that I've wanted to read for ages and this is How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. Um, so this is, I believe, um, about some time travel, I think. Um, yeah, so a 41 year old teacher who's been alive for centuries. I've had really good things about Matt Haig's writing. I've listened to him on Fern Cotton's podcast, Happy Place, and um, I'm interested in what he has to say. And this is in really good condition, one pound from the bookshop. The next one is one that I bought because I heard um, Ghost Reader, um, whose channel I shall link below, talk about this when he did the POC a thon, and I have had it on my radar for a while. And he convinced me that I wanted to pick it up, and um, this is in a fun, absolutely perfect condition. 
and this is 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, it's magical realism. It's, um, I'm not exactly sure like what it's about particularly, but um, I liked the way that he described it and I've wanted to read Gabriel Garcia Marquez for a long time. So um, yeah, I'm gonna give this one a try as my first one. The third one is by an author I've wanted to read for ages and it's one that I've had on my wish list for a long time since I heard about it on the Bic Riot podcast two years ago now and um, that is The Interestings by Meg Wallitzer. So um, this is uh, set in 1974, six teenagers are playing at being cool, smoking and drinking sharing their dreams and then it says um, basically what happens to them decades later um, as the group's fortunes tilt precipitously their friendships are put under the ultimate strain of envy and crushing disappointment so uh, that sounds um, up my street definitely a sort of coming of age story of the six people next I have one by an author who I've only read one of their books but I really like her as a person and I listen to her podcast and I think she's all around lovely and that is um, Giovanna Fletcher and this book is called Dream a Little Dream. Um, I feel like I'm doing a really blurby haul but I haven't actually gone through the books before reading so I just grabbed a few minutes while I could so sorry. Um, so this is about Sarah, always a good start. She's been single for two years having to spend time with her ex-boyfriend and his new girlfriend and all their mutual friends. Um, and she's a PA to a horrible man in London. Her career is a constant disappointment. And she starts dreaming about a handsome stranger. Um, and her dream stranger then makes an unexpected real life appearance, making her question everything she thought she ever wanted. So it's gonna be probably easy read, romance, um, uplifting, happy, just what I need sometimes when um, I like something quite light hearted and happy. The next book is one that I picked up because I've heard um, Mercedes talk about this one very favourably several times and therefore when I saw it I had to pick it up and that is um, All Among the Barley by Melissa Harrison. This is quite a new um, a new book. Um, this is set in the, in the 1930s I believe in East Anglia and it follows a girl called Edie and she is kind of still... Um, the landscape and things are still getting over the First World War and she meets an older woman who's a journalist, I think it says. Um, yeah, he wants to write about rural traditions and she takes a special interest in Edie, but it says, is she all, what, all that she seems? So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one because I've heard such great things. Um, next, I've got one which I didn't know what it was about at all, but I've heard um, Simon of Savage Reads talk about this one quite a few times, and so when I saw it, I recognised it and picked it up. Another one, really good condition, um, and that is a song for Izzy Bradley by Caris Bray. It doesn't tell you too much about it on the back, it just says it's a, a family it's called the Bradley family, and... Um, Zippy is 16 and in love for the first time. Alice, 13, dreams of playing for Liverpool. In some ways, they're a bit different. Seven-year-old Jacob and his dad believe in miracles. These days, their mum doesn't believe in anything, even getting out of bed. How does life go on now that Izzy is gone? Sounds like it's going to be a bit sad, but I like um, family um, family books as well um, about you know, the relationships and um, things that families go through. The next one is one that I can't remember where I heard it about it. I'm not sure if it was on podcast or on a bit cheap. But anyhow, um, this is uh, Tangerine by Christine Mangum. This is about two friends who had a big falling out and um, didn't speak for a long time. Um, they're called Lucy and Alice. And um, Alice has just arrived to start up a new life in Morocco. And then she bumps unexpectedly into Lucy and things all start to go a bit out of control. Alice's husband goes missing. So it's a bit of a mystery. And um, it says it's the girl on the train meets the talented Mr. Ripley, Mr. Ripley under the Moroccan sun. So it sounds like it's going to be quite fast, um, quite interesting and um, with a twisty plot. So that's good. And then I have an Adele Parks, woo, Adele Parks book. Um, so this is called The Other Woman's Shoes. This is about two couples, Martha and Michael, and Eliza and Greg. 
and then basically um, how both their relationships sort of start to fall apart. I'm guessing obviously there's an affair because of what the title of the book is. And um, I read my first Adele Parks book a couple of months ago. And I re- it's really drawn into it, but I had some issues with it. So I'm just interested to see um, how I feel about this one. Four more to go. Annoyingly, when I got home, I already had one of them, which is, I think, I think the first time I've actually done a duplication. Um, I was Sarah Waters, the paying guest. So I got home and I thought, have I got this one? And it turns out I have. So this one will be um, going to um, charity shop. So it'd be nice to find for someone. The last three, so um, this one my friend Nicola pushed into my hand and said, you have to buy this book. And it is The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. It's one that I've seen around a lot, like in Waterstones and in the supermarkets and things. Um, set in 1942, Leo Sokolov arrived in Auschwitz. He's given the job of tattooing the prisoners marked for survival. Um, whew. Um, and then waiting in line to be tattooed is a young girl um, who he falls in love with. So um, I bet it's going to be a really hard read, but yeah, I, I trust her recommendation. Sorry about all the background noise, if you can hear all the blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the last two. So one is um, a Katie Ford book called A Country Escape. And I really enjoy Katie Ford's books. They're romances, they're light-hearted. They usually feature country houses and lots of tea and cake and a romance with a kind of uh, boy next door. And I just really enjoy them. Um, they really brighten things up for me if I'm feeling a bit down. Um, it's in really good condition. It's a hardback. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one but in a time when I need it. And the last one is one I couldn't quite believe my eyes that I was seeing for such a good price. And um, that is uh, Three Women by Lisa Today. So this is only just out, um, maybe over the last couple of months. It's still in hardback in the shops. It would have cost me about £15 to buy this. Yeah, 16 to buy, which is less, more, sorry, more than I paid for the whole lot of these books, which came to £13 for everything I just mentioned. This is um, a non-fiction book um, looking at sexual desire in women and it's a case study of three women who Lisa Tadeo spent a lot of time interviewing, following and I believe even moved to the towns where they live to sort of get into their lives a bit more and about their relationships um, with men. It's got a quote from Elizabeth Gilbert on the front which is a good sign. I just couldn't believe it that this was in there so awesome so i'm definitely definitely going back to that bookshop it's brilliant so um that was all of the masses of books that i hauled in the month of september um let me know if you've read any of these books let me know what you thought let me know if there's any that you want to get and what have you hauled this month that you've been really glad to get your paws on so i hope you're having a lovely week and i will speak to you soon bye